So all we need is a list of genes. For the example I'm using today, I'm just doing a very basic dseq2 differential expression, but you could do this with single cell sequencing as well. Maybe the markers for an individual cluster or the differential expression between different groups of cells. It doesn't matter as long as you have a list of either gene symbols, ensemble IDs, or entries IDs. So if we look at our significant genes, we see we have ensemble. We won't have to convert these, but again, gene symbols would work too if you had those instead. So for this, we need to install three different packages. Cluster profile is the actual package that'll be doing the Go analysis. Annotation DBI will just run in the background. And importantly, if your genes come from human cells or tissues, we need the Homo sapiens database here and if it was from mouse instead of capital H lowercase s it would be capital M lowercase m here. So let's just go ahead and load in these libraries. All right so I have that significant data frame here. Let's only take the positively differentially expressed genes and above 0.5 log fold to change. All right, so we have 402 genes. So let's just get the row names because we just need the list of gene symbols or ensemble IDs. All right, so this is what we need. So let's just convert this to a variable here. And we're calling that genes to test. And now we can run the actual go command. And we're going to save the output to go results and the command from cluster profile is enrich go and then we're going to point to the genes genes to test which we just saved and now we need to point to the database we're going to be using which is the one we should have just installed so org db is going to be this database here and then we need to specify the key type. So again, I have ensemble IDs, so I need to specify ensemble IDs here. And then there's three different classes of gene ontology. Usually BP or biological processes is the one you really care about. The others never really find that informative. So we're gonna pass ONT or ontology, and then we're just gonna pass BP. But if you cared about the others, you could pass those here too. And then let me just show you real quick what it would look like if you had gene symbols instead. You would just change this to symbol. If you had entries ID, you would change it to entries. And then if you had mouse, you would change this to M. But anyways, let's just run this. Took about 30 seconds. Let's just look at the results. We can convert it to a data frame. And yes, I'm zoomed in very far, so it looks kind of ugly. But you have the go ID. And you'll have the description. And then you have how many genes out of your input genes were in that go term. Then you have background ratio, which I believe is the number of genes in the go term. And then the number of background genes. So how many human genes in total were used for the background. And then of course the p-value and then the p-adjusted. And then another way of adjusting the p-value. And then you have all the gene IDs that were found from your data. And then finally we can plot this in a nice little bar plot. So let's just make something called fit and then we're going to plot and then bar plot go results and then we're just going to pass show category 20. So we're just going to get the top 20 and plot it. Let me just save this to a file and then I'll bring it up so we can see what it actually looks like. Anyways, after playing with the width and height a little bit just to fit it all nicely into one figure, this is what we have.
the width of the bars correspond to the number of genes from your data set that were in that biological process. So again, this was really simple to do and is super powerful because looking at individual genes from a gene list isn't always the best way to interpret RNA-seq data. And in the end, this only takes a few lines of code and takes less than maybe one minute.